So let me first introduce uh, Jill uh, Hagengard, uh, the Chief Medical Officer of Color Genomics. Um, she is a board-certified pathologist, um, and she will be talking about uh, color genomics and how they're trying to understand risk analysis from, from our genome. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Thanks to Schiff for the opportunity to speak here and to represent color. Um, like Jordan said, my background is I'm a board-certified pathologist, and I did two fellowships after that, one in molecular genetic pathology and the other in pathology, oncology, informatics. And my chairman said to me, Jill, why don't you do a real fellowship? You're never going to get a real job. Um, and what I was actually doing, I, I lucked out, but the, I was training myself to do precision medicine before we had the phrase precision medicine. So what we do in molecular genetic pathology is we specialize in looking at the DNA and RNA that's in tumors and trying to figure out what drug is going to um, that tumor would respond to, or looking for the nucleic acids that are from um, infectious agents that are in the human body, or for looking at the germline um, in, in a human being and trying to determine what inherited diseases they're at risk for. Um, so the, those are kind of the, essentially the, the things that um, we do and specialize in. And I um, started off in, in regular academia, teaching residents and med students and practicing pathology. And in 2011, I came back out to Silicon Valley full time. I got kind of, um, I think, frustrated with uh, the incumbent uh, healthcare system in the United States. It seemed really fundamentally broken, and it seemed impossible to fix it from within. And so I looked back out. I trained at Stanford um, for med school and had met a lot of people who had gone on to become entrepreneurs in the area. Um, following the, the, you know, the companies that rose up in the 2000s, where we saw the rise of social media and e-commerce. Um, and I thought, no, these are the kind of things that we need to start applying to healthcare. We need a, a healthcare consumer should be every bit as delighted as a Zappos.com customer. And, um, and the only way to do that is to get out of the system. So I took a gamble and I came out here, and I've been working with various, uh, you know, kind of tech-based uh, companies who want to fix healthcare. And I joined Color in November of last year, and it's actually a great fit um, for what my background and my interests are. So I've just got a few slides. Uh, I'm going to explain why, why preventive genetics is now possible. I'm going to give a couple examples, and then I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing at Color. Oops. So we, uh, actually, the last speaker just showed the slide. <laughs> but this is why preventive genetics is now possible. At the beginning of my career, um, we had older technologies to do sequencing, and it was ex incredibly expensive and cumbersome. And in medicine, we used sequencing very judiciously and very sparingly. And so we would try to, we would wait for people to get sick, and then we would look at them and describe their signs and symptoms, and then we would give them what we call a clinical diagnosis. And very rarely did we have the opportunity or the luxury to go look at their DNA. What we can do now, over the course of really just 10 short years, is instead of waiting for people to get sick, we can look at the genomes of healthy people and predict who's at very high risk of getting sick. So in, and we can do this at a consumer price point because our healthcare system isn't going to pay for it, our insurance system isn't going to pay for it because we have a, we built a sick care system in the United States. You, typically, your insurance isn't going to cover your testing unless you're already sick. So the only person who cares about prevention is you. <laughs> and the only person who's motivated to care about prevention is you. And then maybe, you know, self-insured employers, because you're going to be there for a long time and they want to keep you from having an early heart attack or early cancer, because then they're on the hook. So that kind of changes, um, once you recognize that and once you get this stuff down to a price point, that really changes the, the channels that you can reach out to with, with preventative opportunities, like uh, self-insured employers, in addition to providers if they want it and consumers if they want it. So this is just an example of um, a article that came out in 2013, American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics. What they did is they said, okay, now that we're sometimes doing exome sequencing on pediatric cases um, that are diagnostic odysseys, we don't know what's going wrong. When you're looking at somebody's exome or genome, you're looking for you know, intellectual disability or, or, or that, fine, go look at those genes, but also on every single exome that you do, here's 56 genes that we know for sure are associated with adult onset preventative disorders that have well-established guidelines for prevention. So examples of these are like hereditary cancer syndrome, such as BRCA, 
the BRCA genes or Lynch syndrome, which is a hereditary colon cancer. Um, some of the hereditary cardiovascular syndromes, like if you hear about the young athletes who dropped dead on the basketball court, um, inherited high cholesterol, this is actually uh, very common. And um, we only do diagnose about 1% of it in the United States because our system is fundamentally broken. <laughs> and it, it, it doesn't have the right incentives and motivation to tell these people that you don't have garden variety cholesterol, you were born with high cholesterol and you're exposed to it every day of your life so that you're at, you know, by the time you're in your 20s, you're at 80-fold increased risk of having a cardiovascular event compared to somebody who doesn't have FH. And 50% of your kids have it, and they're born with it. And we lose decades of opportunity for preventive um, interventions. Those kids should be on statins by the time they're eight years old. Um, and then there's uh, some other uh, dogs and cats that are on that 56 gene list, but those are kind of the big ones. And so it's kind of a framework for starting how to think about um, advancing preventative opportunities and incenting the right partners. So um, color does work with um, large self-insured employers, people like Visa and Salesforce, Grail. Um, and so that was kind of a unique, um, you know, no genetic testing company had ever really done that before. And so we were actually found a really receptive audience there. Um, and in addition to that, so the, the flagship product that started off the company was a 19-gene hereditary breast and ovarian cancer screen. And it's for $249. And this test, just a few years ago, was a $4,000 test offered by one company who owned a patent that wouldn't let anybody else test for it, and so they could keep the price artificially high. Went to the Supreme Court, um, and the, they, they lost the enforceability of their patent, which allowed companies like Color to come on the market with all of these new technologies, drop that price from $4,000 to $249. We then increased our um, genes to 30 hereditary cancer genes um, that goes across not just breast and ovarian, but all of the common inheritable kinds of cancers. And all of these have actionable preventative opportunities to prevent people from getting sick in the first place. And then you can kind of see the direction that we're gonna take the company to continue to expand um, these preventative opportunities. Uh, the other thing that the company's doing that um, you don't see uh, in our healthcare system, because there's so much privacy laws in our incumbent healthcare system, if I know that my patient is at risk for getting breast cancer. I can't tell any of their family members about it. it. It's privacy laws, right? So what we can do is use the power of social media and the Silicon Valley pixie dust to incentivize this person, this pro band, to become a champion for their family and to use social media and e-commerce and stickiness to try to get engage the family members to start to practice family medicine and get them tested as well. And we offer that um, family member testing for $50, $49. And so those are the ways that, that color is really advancing um, uh, opportunities for preventative care. 